Good evening and welcome to my laboratory. Well, what you're looking at here is a test setup that I'm going to use to compare the magnetic fields uh, uh, produced by a Tesla bifiler coil compared to an ordinary monofiler flat pancake coil with the same number of turns and uh, approximately the same DC resistance. This one, the Tesla by filer coil has 3.90 ohms DC resistance. And those kinds of parameters there. The monofiler coil has uh, 3.92 ohms DC resistance, just a hair more. Same number of turns, same wire, slightly more inductance. Uh, 118, 118. Okay, that could just be because I have a tighter winding on there than I do on this miserable coil over here. And here is the trusty, dusty tri field meter. It measures magnetic or electric fields and microwave radiation and I'll be using the magnetic 0 to 100 milligauss and magnetic 0 to 3 milligauss ranges for this test. And there's a ruler taped to the table so I know where I've got things positioned. Uh, the edge of the box I wanted to have at 15 centimeters. away from the reference X marks the spot which is where I'll be placing the center of the coils. Okay. Stand by. And here's the function generator that I'll be using to feed the coil with a 10 volt sine wave signal and I'll be changing the frequency as we go along. And there's the oscilloscope to monitor behind all those cables. Okay, first of all, uh, just to show you that there's no trickery or anything. Oh, this uh, uh, tri-field meter, as it says on the back, is optimized for 60 hertz magnetic settings or frequency weighted and calibrated for 60 hertz sine waves. Okay. So it doesn't detect stationary magnetic fields, it only detects alternating magnetic fields. And I have a little magnet here. And if I turn the Gauss meter to uh, battery test, battery's good. It's a brand new battery, I just replaced it. 0 to 100 milligauss range. 0 to 3 milligauss range and then I take the magnet and move it past the front of the, of the thing you can see that I get a response to a moving or changing magnetic field but not to a stationary one okay well, as it should be so we have it in the three, 0 to 3 milligauss range right now and what I'll do is just move the meter around, slide it up the ruler, show that there's nothing tricky about my test setup that's causing much of an indication. Now if I point it back behind me over here towards the computer, you can see that I got a big magnetic field going on back there. But here in the test area, even near the function generator, there's a little bit near the oscilloscope. The oscilloscope has a power supply, so it's putting out some. But uh, here in the test range, there's nothing, nothing suspicious. Okay, so let's go back to our 15 centimeter reference point here. Sorry about the light. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna hook up the 
monofiler coil, place it on the reference mark. And then I will connect it. Stand by. Had to use both hands to do that. Okay, now I've got the monofiler coil connected to the function generator. And it's right now it's not producing any output. Frequency is zero. And I've got the tri-field meter set to the zero to three milligauss range. So that's going to be the middle range there that goes up to the three there. Okay, and uh, now I will start turning the frequency knob on the function generator. That's 30 hertz, 40 hertz, 50 hertz, 60 hertz. Right there, that pegs it at the 3. Uh, but if I go higher, 70, 80, 90. Now we have to switch over to the uh, 100 milligauss range, and that's the top scale. So we have about 60, a little over 60 milligauss now at uh, a 110 hertz. Now I'll go up 12, 13, 14, up and up and up. Uh, so that's about uh, 800 kilohertz right there. I'm sorry, 800 hertz. And that's right at the 50 marker, just below the 50 marker, 50 milligauss from this monofiler coil positioned on the X. Okay, so stand by now and I'll hook up the Tesla by filer coil. Okay, now I've got the Tesla by filer coil connected up to the function generator. And we're back down at uh, zero kilohertz. Nothing going in, and I've reset the tri field meter to the 0 to 3 milligauss range. That's the middle dial there. Okay, so now I'm going to start uh, adding frequencies 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, or 50, 60 hertz right there, and 70, 80, and now we'll switch to the 0 to 100 milligauss range and uh, so we're at four, uh, 40 or 4 uh, milligauss, sorry uh, and uh, now we'll continue up 80 hertz, 90, 100 hertz 110, 20, 30, 40, 150 hertz 60, 70, 80, 200 hertz 6, 7, 300 hertz, 400 hertz, 500 hertz, 600 hertz, 700 hertz, 800 hertz, And one megahertz, or one kilohertz, sorry. And that again is just uh, just right at the 50 there. And uh, let's see if I move forwards and backwards. We can see that that reading is due to what is going on from the coil. Go back to the 15 reference area there. And if I tilt the coil this way, really pointing it right towards the meter, you can see that the meter is responding to the alternating magnetic field produced by the Tesla by filer coil. 
But is it stronger than the monofiler coil? No. Uh, it's about the same. Just to cross check here, uh, we're reading slightly over 50 milligauss. We're, we're looking at the monofiler coil at 1 kilohertz. And we're at the right uh, 15 centimeter spacing. And I'm going to pick up the other coil now. Put it in position. Okay, so now with the Texas or te Tesla, the Tesla Texas bifiler coil connected, uh, also still at one kilohertz and the magnetic field is a wee hair over 50 milligauss and everything is still the same. So we have essentially the same magnitude of magnetic field from the Tesla coil, Tesla bifiler and the straight monofiler coil at uh, one kilohertz and at frequencies uh, between zero and one kilohertz. They're the same. Thank you for watching.